The Democratic Detonation War Bond is a day old, and as part of our launch day test, we've already tried out all the guns against both the Terminids and Automatons. Today, we'll go over the highlights so that you can get a feel for which weapon does what and whether or not the Democratic Detonation War Bond is worth your money, time, or super credits. Because we're covering five different weapons in one video, we can't go into the level of detail we normally do for our regular stress tests, but we'll still definitely be covering the nuts and bolts of it all. The five weapons that come with the War Bond are the BR-14 Adjudicator Marksman Rifle, the G-123 Thermite Grenade, the R-36 Eruptor Explosive Rifle, the GP-31 Grenade Pistol, and the CB-9 Explosive Crossbow. They roughly unlock in that order, so that's the order we'll be featuring them in. The crossbow is easily the most unique and novel weapon in the game currently, so make sure to stick around for that. Let's get right into it. The BR-14 Adjudicator Marksman Rifle is an accurate armor-penetrating rifle. The BR-14 Adjudicator delivers righteous judgments to medium-sized enemies, though its restrictive magazine limits its effectiveness against large groups. The general intent behind this appears to be smack bang between a sniper and assault rifle. In single shot mode, it isn't particularly punchy, so leaving it on automatic mode and focusing on 2-3 round bursts seems to be the play. The rifle's reload menu shows a 3 setting scope from 25 meters to 50 meters to 100 meters and offers a fire mode toggle between semi and auto. Let's see how it did against various units. Okay, so it seems to require about two shots in the eye. Yes, yeah, so you've got to shoot them twice in the weak spot to take them out with this gun. In the face. Oh my god, the recoil! It goes left and right! Really? I, I would expect a gun like this to one-shot a foot soldier unit. Yeah, it's a sniper rifle, basically. Cool, good sign. Alright, can this penetrate? It cannot penetrate. Um, I think it has to be way more. Like, if I don't know if you can see the lag between my hand moving and the actual reticle, but it's uh, a little bit painful. All right, guys. It doesn't work. That works. Oh my god. It's just the the, the the lag. It's the lag. This is, um... Yeah, it's not the armament I would advise going into combat with, personally. <laughs> oh my god, it really sucks! Alright, the Uzi is like a better primary. All in all, I found the Adjudicator to be one of the less impressive offerings in the new Warbond. It struggles to find its place, needing around two shots to headshot Devastators, with a massive recoil swinging side to side as well as knocking upward. It also struggles to knock down Striders as I would have expected from a medium penetrating weapon. In that sense, it's competing with an arsenal of other weapons which both take out light and medium armoured targets far more effectively. It encapsulates some of the worst facets of both marksman rifles and assault rifles, lacking both stopping power but with massive recoil and aiming lag that makes it very unwieldy. Onward and hopefully upward. The G123 Thermite Grenade is a thermite grenade designed to adhere to surfaces before burning at 2000 degrees Celsius. It's capable of burning through some armour. Theoretically, this grenade should be an amazing weapon for taking out heavily armoured enemies first burning through their armor, then detonating in the soft, juicy core. In practice, I found it didn't quite perform as expected, especially against the Terminids, but I'll let the footage speak for itself. All right, all right, we got the thermite on, on the thing. Does it stick? All right, it's on the face. Is it gonna explode? Great, I, I feel so, okay. All right, let's do another one. All right, we've got three thermites on the Hulk. Let's see what it does. Okay, all right, so the second thermite in the face, got it. All right, two in the face. Two in the face. Let's go. Come on. Get wrecked, son. One, two, no. <laughs> thermite is not it. Thermite is not it. All right, underside face, overside face. Come on, come on. All right. 
If you use all of your thermite grenades, you can take out one charger. It's on his head. Run him. Eat more thermite, prick. Eat more thermite. Yes. Yes. Get thermited. That's cool to just watch, I've got to say. All right. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> Doesn't do anything, but it's fun to... I mean, it's hurt him, but nowhere near enough. Can the thermite close bug holes? <laughs> in, in 10 years, perhaps. I guess we'll see. Ah, counting down. All right, we got there eventually. So the best I managed to get from the thermite grenade is a two shot against a hulk if the grenade managed to stick to its actual face. If you miss, it appears to have a harder time penetrating the thicker armor to do any actual damage. Against Devastators, oddly, it was almost useless. I feel like this grenade isn't quite performing as intended, whether that be due to the way the game engine calculates damage, not factoring in the effect of the thermite and its penetration, or otherwise. Sticking its vents on AA emplacements, I wasn't able to get any meaningful damage out whatsoever, and simply just switched to one-shotting them with the Quasar instead. Against charges, it was borderline useless. I needed to throw four of them at the charger's head to get it down. Against Ball Titans, well, you saw. I think this one has a lot of potential in theory, but it needs some serious reworking by the devs to shine. The huge fuse and burn time has to be offset by mega impressive damage in order to warrant someone taking it in favor of the other grenades. Next up, the R36 Eruptor. This bolt-action rifle fires jet-assisted shells that explode shrapnel in all directions upon impact. Not recommended for close quarters use. Sitting in the explosive weapon category, this is the first primary that I truly feel does justice to the moniker. Let's check it out. You know what? Whoa! Yes! <laughs> that didn't count though, did it? Oh man, it was just like a visual thing. Hey! <laughs> three, three kills in one shot. Oh, that's lovely. That is just lovely, guys. In the head. Oh. While we're here. What I want to test out is this. Yeah, definitely the five rounds in the mag thing is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is, you know? Oh, come on. And you really need to be uh, delicate with your aiming. Oh, man, it's so good. Like, the, the AoE on it. The AoE on it, guys. You can just take out cluster. It's one of those bad hulks. I'm not going to make it, guys. I'm not going to make it, but i got to try. i got to do this for the, for the test. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's the play against Hulks. Back to the Eruptor. Oh man, I love the AOE on this thing. Yep, one shot on the Hive Guard. Brother. That's just, it's just good. All right, one in the butt, bugs everywhere. Two in the butt, butt's gone. So th this is the debuttonator. Butts be gone. My first impressions of this gun were hugely positive. It scored an 11 out of 10 for fun alone. Speaking of fun, consider joining us as these Warbond tests become a regular feature of the channel. We of course have many more individual gun and stratagem tests to go through and being subscribed ensures you get notified when we release those videos. That said, things become a little more complex in the higher difficulties where you are mobbed by greater numbers of units and the Eruptor really struggles to put down sustained fire. The Eruptor strikes me as the primary to take if you're a machine gun or flamethrower support person. As long as you have some way to mow down the trash mobs, this thing is absolutely wonderful for medium targets and utility purposes. Simply having that much ammo on hand to take out bug nests, fabricators and container doors is amazing. My main issue with it was very inconsistent performance depending on where units were hit. Devastators and Berserkers either got one-shotted or required in excess of three hits to go down. This can be a big issue both because the gun is so hunkering and slow to aim, and the round travels so slowly so it can be difficult to target weak spots. On the whole though, the Eruptor is one of the highlights of this Warbond, and I'll definitely be playing around with it a little bit more, as part of some very different loadouts to my usuals. The GP31 Grenade Pistol is a pistol that fires grenades. 
It must be reloaded between shots. Boy, that description just oozes vibe, doesn't it? Really makes you want to try it. Here's to hoping it's more exciting in the field than how it's described. How was it against units, though? Okay. Oh, no. It's a single shot, then a reload. What's the drop on this thing? Okay. It's about the same as a grenade launcher support. Why does the explosion pull me forward? So, in practice, I'm afraid it's basically just a sidearm which fires grenades. It has a huge amount of drawbacks to compensate for that one upshot of being a great utility sidearm for missions where you want to destroy bug nests or fabricators. It's essentially just a grenade as you know it, but fired from your sidearm. I definitely wouldn't waste ammo on enemy units because this thing only gets two grenades back per supply kit and only a single grenade back per ammo kit. This makes it insanely ammo inefficient. Definitely only for specific use case purposes, such as outpost hunts. I can't imagine this would beat out panic button sidearms such as the Redeemer Uzi for those moments where you have to pull some clutch survival antics. Our final weapon, the CB9 Exploding Crossbow, fires powerful exploding bolts which do maximum damage upon direct impact. Gravity must be accounted for when aiming. Basically, there's a ton of bolt drop on this thing. The reload menu simply just reveals a single control, semi-automatic and it can't be toggled. I suppose they thought it good to remind you that's all you get. In practice, it functions like a neutered version of the Eruptor with more round drop over distance and quicker firing ability. Unfortunately, it's not able to take out fabricators or bug nests. Its highlights are that it can totally mow down groups of foot soldier automaton units very easily. It's possibly my favorite weapon in the game for taking out striders. You can take out two or more in a single shot if they're close enough, and the bolts can be fired in very quick succession. With Berserkers, it's a bit of a mixed bag, needing some decent aimings to get the most out of it. It can range from sawing them in half in a hit or two to requiring several, depending on where the bolt is landing. Devastators is where the crossbow really shows its shortcomings though, usually requiring at least three hits unless you're aiming at critical spots, which are very difficult to hit with the crossbow. On the terminated side, I just found it to be a total loss. While it can take out mounds of smaller units easily enough, it does so in a way that endangers the user with its AoE. You can't put out more damage against groups of smaller units with this than you can with the Breaker Incendiary or the Flamethrower, so it largely seems pointless. It has no utility uses to compensate for its drawbacks either, just making it an all-round liability for the bugs. I was especially amazed that it appeared to take around four shots to take out a single brood commander, which is astoundingly weak for an explosive weapon with its intrinsic drawbacks. All in all, a very interesting war bond themed around explosive weapons. As expected, we mostly have tools with niche use case purposes for very specific loadouts. One thing I worry is that with one war bond per month, it's possible the devs have overcommitted themselves. If you consider that each bond might average around five weapons and that they only have a single month to design, implement and balance those weapons, it's highly likely that we'll be getting a lot of filler guns that don't serve any true purpose in the arsenal. I would personally rather prioritize a quality over quantity approach because the balance requires work as is, much less if we continue adding guns to the game at this pace. For me, Personally, the only true standout was the Eruptor Explosive Rifle. It does something which no other primary presently can in the game, so for those who typically take MGs into the field, it's basically the new go-to primary weapon to balance those loadouts. The Thermite Grenade has a lot of potential, but needs work in order to bring it up to par. It simply needs to be more powerful and consistent against armoured enemies in order to be worth taking over something like the Basic Impact Grenade. Anyhow, let me know what your own experiences with this war bond have been like, and I'll see you next time.